Justin here. A uh, very sad day today. I just found out that the great Lemmy Kilmister has uh, passed away. I'm never really sure what to say, but I was very disappointed in myself to discover that I had no motorhead lessons uh, on my site. So I've come straight to the studio and transcribed and learned his all-time classic song, which is the Ace of Spades. And we're going to be doing the whole thing, all of the parts that are going on. I'll probably do the, the, the actual solo in another lesson, but I'm going to do it right away. So that should be with you soon as well. Uh, so let's get to a close-up and check out all the riffs. Let's go through this masterpiece one riff at a time, and we're going to start off with the best part of the whole song, which is, of course, the bass riff. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, it's only two notes. Great rhythm and, and such a fat sound as well. A lot of distortion from his Ricky bass there. So uh, we're starting off with the third finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string. And we're going to go down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, down. And then the last note is there with the first finger in the fifth fret. Same string, fifth string. One E and a, two E and a, three. Picking directions right there, because you'll see it down, your hand keeps moving consistently. Otherwise, it gets really complicated. So make sure you get that pick and direction right again. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, 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 down. One E and up, two E and up, three and four. Okay, really important you get that right. So the first guitar riff here is starting with the first finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string and the open thicker string, the open E, so two E notes. And we're gonna have this little strumming pattern just on those two strings, down, down, up, up, down. And then first finger just moves up a little bit to mute the thicker string. Third finger goes down in the ninth fret of the fourth string. You play those two. Then you lift off third finger and put second finger down in the eighth fret of the fourth string. And then lift that finger off and do a little mini bar with the first finger to get those two notes. Down, down, up, up, down. One, two, down, up, two, and down, down, up, up, down. Now, technically, I've just been doing it because I've slowed it down. I've gone into autopilot there and I'm going down, down, up, up, down, down, up. Down. But I nearly always play these last three years old down strokes, which is kind of the wrong strumming if you're looking at it at a technical level, but it just feels better to me. So down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Okay, the 
count. 1e and a 2e and 3e and a 4 and 1e and a 2e and 3e and a 4 and... <laughs> I wouldn't get into the 16th counting, just listen to the riff. If you don't know how the riff goes, then you listen to the wrong song or learning the wrong song. <laughs> A lot easier though to go down, down, up, up, down, and then the down turn. And then we're going to the verses, so we're starting the verses with a G chord. Okay, now I use a big open chord G, which I'm pretty sure is the one that's used on the original recording, which is third fret, muting the fifth string, open, open, and then third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings there at the third fret. Okay, and it's just a big strum right on the bar. So one, two, three, four. Strum again. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So it's just on the bar except for the fourth time, which is one, two, and three, four. Okay, all down. So. And now we've got this little cool lead riff that happens. Now, it's not on the original recording, but I nearly always put a low E string to transition from that chord to getting up to the little riff here. So it gives me a chance to play a note and then get up there. I've always done it when I've played this tune, uh, but it's not on the original recording that I can hear. Uh, the little riff now, we're using the third finger to play the 14th fret on strings two and three. Now you want to back it up as well, and just, uh, that, so it's just that finger, but the other two first and second fingers want to sit right behind it to give it a bit of strength for the bend. We're going to do a bend. And if you bend it right, you'll end up bending uh, the third string a tone and the second string a semitone. Just kind of get this bit. You get that sound. Shouldn't do it, as long as you're pressing hard and the strings don't kind of collapse together you'll probably find you get that. So it's bend, release, then 12th fret, 2nd and 3rd strings again with the 1st finger, 14th fret, 12th fret. So we're just playing the 2nd and 3rd strings. Then almost the same but finishing there with the 3rd finger on the 14th fret of the 4th string. Now, the third finger being where it is, the next chord that we've got to go to is a D chord. So you want to leave that finger on, slide it down to the seventh fret, so it's a nice smooth transition there from there to our D kind of power chord. It's a major bar chord shape. You probably don't want to be using your third and fourth finger there. Play a regular uh, third finger mini bar covering the uh, strings two, three, and four of the uh, seventh fret. First finger playing the fifth fret of the fifth string, making sure the tip of the finger, of course, is muting the thicker string because you don't want that ringing out either. Um, and then we move that down two frets to C, and then we've got the riff again. Back to D, back to C, and then we've got riff one. So, G, G, D to C, and then riff two once. Back to D, back to C, and then riff one. Now then you're into second verse. Plays all of exactly the same as first verse. Then we've got another break where we play this riff. But it's got a bit of palm mute on it this time. You want to bring your hand. And it does it four times that time, just with a little bit of palm mute. So now we reach the bridge, which contains Lemmy's probably most famous line. And uh, we have that with an E chord. We play the E chord, and then we mute with the uh, strumming hand just on the strings, and relax the chord shape as well. So we've got absolutely no chance of a, any note ringing out there. So E, two, three, four, D, E. Okay, so the D is coming on the and after four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, 
three, four. And that's the way I like it, baby. I don't want to live forever. Okay, so we got E, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One whole bar off, three, four, then one, and two, and three, and four, and on the E, it's a little build. Then we move it down to the D. We've got a new strumming pattern now. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Quite fancy. Quite a fast little strumming pattern, that. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. It, some of you beginners might recognize it as old, what I call Old Faithful, which is a classic kind of strumming pattern, which is just with a bit of distortion and played a lot faster. So, down, down, up, up, down. One, E, and up, two, E, and three, E, and up, four, E, and. That's two bars of that on the D. Then down to B. And then we're into the solo. Now, there's one other little bit that I'll point out that I used to put in, uh, so it's not on the record, it's just uh, that you hear that classic bass, uh, little bass riff there on the D. You hear that little riff going there, and you can kind of do it like this. That's how I used to do it in band, anyway. so just using second finger to little finger to get to the B. You could do just uh, shift. Down with the C there. Oh, it's just used to do it here. And then make a little jump. Like I said, it's not on the record, it's Lemmy doing the bass part there of, of that melody. Um, and in the solos, if you were going to do a backing for someone else while they were doing the solos, it's going to be four bars of A, the regular open A up there if you want, whichever one. Then another four bars of B. And then another four bars of A again. Okay, then we've got the uh, another verse. We've got this other little uh, riffy part as well, where uh, just before the end, the very last section, it's it's like Lemmy's initial riff there, but you just uh, you're not playing any other notes other than the, the low E and the octave. Now I'm going to show you the the last little lead part as well. Uh, that's not in the solo, of course, which is uh, this little bit. You hear it right at the end while Lemmy's moving to a D and then to a C. So. Okay, so it's literally first finger 12th fret thinner string, third finger 15th fret second string, tone bend. You get to the same note. Okay, but give it a bit of vibrato, it gets a real nice squeal. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> really, really cool little riff, that one. Um, and it does that for four bars, and then the very end uh, is just E, D, E. And that's the whole of the rhythm part. So I think we're going to do the solo as well in this lesson. It's only a short one, shouldn't be too difficult to explain. Uh, and it's a really nice solo to play this one as well. It's not too hard. There's a few little moments that are a bit sticky, but there's some really nice licks to learn from it as well. So uh, the first four bar section that we're going to look at is this. Okay, so starting off, I always played an open A there on the first note. Again, I can't really tell if it's on the record or if it's the rhythm guitar part, but it kind of works good. So, open A. Then we've got the third finger, fifth fret of the fifth string, tone bend. And then release. Then fifth fret to third fret, flick off. Fifth fret on the sixth string. Back to the third fret on the fifth string. So, one, and two, three, and four. Again. One and two, three and four. Now, so sliding up with the third finger to the seventh fret of the fifth string, fifth fret on the fourth string, seventh fret to fifth fret, flick off on the fourth string, seventh fret on the fifth string, then five to seven on the fourth string. Again, that first two bars. One and Two, three, and four. One and 
Now we've got this cool little repeating riff. So down on the 5th fret of the 4th string, flick off to the 5th fret, 7th fret, and then 7th fret on the 5th string, and back to 5th fret on the 4th string. Okay, that's one beat. One, E, and up. Okay, now I prefer to do down, flick off, down, up, down, flick off, down, up. find that easiest, but you know, different people uh, find it, that particular pattern easier with other different picking patterns, so it's up to you, but I'd recommend starting off with that. So down, flick off, down, up, down, flick off, down, up. Sixteenth note, one, E, and up, two, E, and up, three, E, and up, four, E, and up. It does that four times, so one, E, and up, two, E, and up, three, E, and up, four, then we've got so seventh fret on the fourth string tone bend release fifth fret seventh fret on the fifth string then five seven on the fifth string hammer on to fifth fret on the fourth string that last part one e and a two and three e and that one again, a lot easier to just listen to it than frig around with the counting. But anyway, one E and a two and three E and four E and. Okay, that whole A section now. One. Okay, so the next four bar section is over a B chord, so it's moving to kind of a B minor pentatonic thing. Okay, so we're starting off with the third finger sliding up to the ninth fret of the fifth string, then seventh fret on the fourth string, ninth to seventh flick off. Ninth fret on the fifth string, back to seventh fret on the fourth string, ninth fret, then seventh fret on the third string, then ninth fret on the third string, tone bend. One and two E and a three and four. Again. One and two E and a three and four. Okay, now the next bar, we're, we're, we've got this bend, we're kind of muting it, then playing the 10th fret on the, with the little finger on the 2nd string, then going back to the 9th fret and doing the release bend. Okay, so 10th fret on the 2nd string, the bend's already there, play it, release it, then seven, nine, seven, hammer on, flick off, that whole thing. Ninth fret to seventh fret. It's a little bit weird to get used to maybe, but again, just listening to the original is a lot easier than trying to do the count. One and two E and a three and four. One E and a two and three. So the second two bars of the B chord part of the solo uh, is the first finger in the 10th fret of the second string and the second finger in the 11th fret of the third string and it's, it's tremolo picking. I'm fairly sure that Fast Eddie Clark here is using this particular fingering but I can't be certain, it might be that but I'm pretty sure it's this just because of the way it goes into the next section. Um, and it's basically picking as fast as you can. But it, it's on the beat, so it's still kind of in time. I think 16th notes work pretty good. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So you can see it's just moving up there chromatically in the second bar. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay. 
Again, it's, you know, it's rock and roll, just give it a bit of energy and flack it out as fast as you can and hope for the best, really, rather than trying to be uh, exact on the, uh, on the timing. Okay, so the whole of part B then is this. <laughs> And then we're into the second A section. So this is again four bars of an A chord. Now again, I've quite often play an open A string there on, right on the beat. I don't think it's on the record, but it seems to help me keep in time when I'm playing it on my own. But anyway, so that may or may not be there. You could add it in if you want. Now the very last part of this, I'm not playing it exactly in time. It's, it's very kind of across the beat uh, on the original recording. I have written out a timing on my tab sheet, but I'm not sure I'm even doing it exactly right. It's just, it's rock and roll, it's just finishing off the solo, you know. So listen to it a few times, play along with it, and if you pick it up, you pick it up. If you don't, just get it kind of right, because the attitude means more than the notes anyway. So uh, let's have a look at this first part. <laughs> So it's clearly in pattern four of the minor pentatonic here. Third finger, 15th fret of the second string. Tone bend and release. Then 15, 13, flick off. Down to the 14th fret with the second finger on the third string. Back to the 13th fret on the um, string two. Then we got a similar bunch of notes. 14th fret on the, second, on the third string. Uh, 13th fret on the 2nd string, tone bend from the 15th fret and release, back to the 13th fret, and then to the 14th fret on string 3. So those first two bars. One and two, three and four, one and two, and a three, four, again, one and two, Three and four, one and two, and a three, four. Now it's this next section where the timing of it's quite difficult to, to play along exactly with the record. I got there in the end, but it was more through listening than figuring it out, so that's the approach that I'd recommend you go for as well. Um, we've got 13th fret on the second string, 14th fret on the third string, then 12, 14, 12, hammer on and flick off on the third string, 14th fret on the fourth string, 12th fret on the third string. So, okay, one and two, and uh, this is the timing. Then 14th fret, tone bend, release, flick off to 12, 14th fret on the fourth string, 12th fret on the third string. Then we've got this little rundown, 12th fret on the, the, the one that I was showing you from the last riff, but it's kind of this rundown. 12th fret, 14th fret on the 4th string, 12th fret, move it back to for 10th fret, 12th fret on the 5th string, then you can just about hear 10, hammer on the 12th on the 5th string, and finishing on the 10th fret of the 4th string. So that whole A section, Okay, let's have one run through all of the way, nice and slow. Three, four.
I really hope you enjoy playing this tune as a tribute to the great Lemmy Kilminster. He's an uh, incredible, incredible spirit of rock and roll in him. He, he, was, he was the keeper of the flame, man. He, he, was, he really couldn't care what anyone else thought and just did his thing. And I think that deserves so much respect, even though I must admit I haven't listened to Motorhead much since I was a teenager, you know, but I loved it. And I've always enjoyed it when I've heard it, and I was going to go and see him next month. Um, yeah, real shame. But they're going. All of the great ones are, are leaving us. But at least he had 70 years of rock and roll. He had proper, hard-living rock and roll as well. So that should be celebrated, not mourned. So uh, anyway, have a lot of fun playing this tune and go and check out all of the Motorhead stuff. If you're not familiar with other things than this record, you definitely want to go and check out the Ace of Spades album, or Orgasmatron, uh, whatever, you know, loads and loads of great records to go and check out. So uh, have fun with that and I'll see you for plenty more Lemmy very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.